Today is pretty exciting. I should have listened to Wendy. We bought a trailer. <laughs> big <And> nostrils. <laughs> anytime you're ready, big nostrils. <laughs> I don't have big nostrils. You have big nostrils. I've got an appointment with Northwest Running Boards. We're going to put a trailer hitch, a gooseneck trailer hitch in our truck. So there's not a lot of good stuff in here for the chickens to eat, but it is carbon. And they do get a whole lot of weeds this time of year, springtime. This will be good for the chicken run to help balance all that out. So here's our new trailer hitch. These tie downs spring out so you can put your safety chains on them. got a little pull handle here in the wheel well so you can pull it out to get the safety pin out from that ball you can lift it out flip it upside down and then have a nice flat truck bed again today is pretty exciting there's a reason we got that trailer hitch installed yesterday today we're going to be looking at a used horse trailer we're not getting horses we're going to try and use it as a stock trailer for our goats you might remember in a previous video all the firewood that I had stacked back here that I gave to my dad. We now have a place to park that trailer. Before we do that, Wendy's back from her business trip and is going to talk about how she's been using her new freeze dryer. People with weird chins should do that. <laughs> any, big nostrils. <laughs> anytime you're ready, big nostrils. I don't have big nostrils. You have big nostrils. Leave a comment if Brian has big nostrils and he should stop filming them. <laughs> so I'm back from my trip and Brian wanted me to talk about the freeze dryer and what I've been doing with it. So sorry it's taken so long, but I've been pretty busy. Um, so I've just got some of my stuff over here to kind of explain. So I'm experimenting with a bunch of different things. So I have some potatoes that I bought from the store just to see if this would be something that would preserve. I just don't have any homegrown tomato potatoes right now. So what I did was I shredded them and then I just parboiled them a little so that I could hopefully use these for hash browns or even just to throw into something like, I don't know, like a casserole or something like that. So, so we have those. Um, 
and then I've also taken peppers and these I just chopped up because my thinking is that I'll is that I'll fry them a little bit maybe with some onion um, to put into things like um, things like pasta or eggs in the morning or something like that I want to see if I can do that with then peppers out of the garden these are obviously from the store same as these on onions because I don't have onions yet so these are both completely raw just chopped up and I freeze dry them they're really weird because they feel like um like styrofoam so very strange uh, <laughs> And I think Brian's already showed these, but these are just some chives that I chopped up from the garden and freeze dried. I wanted to really interested in trying this with some of my herbs. So like I have some sage and whorehound and they just look really pretty in the jars. So um, then I also tried just, I had some hamburger and sausage mix from the grocery store and then I put some of my green peppers and onions in it and so this is all cooked and so it's freeze dried and it just has a regular lid on it. I do have a, um, I have one of those vacuum seal machines. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. So usually it vacuums all the air out of stuff like if you're going to put meat in your freezer or something but it's got a little attachment and so I'm using that to vacuum seal these lids. So this isn't like as good as having it in the, the the mylar bags with the oxygen oxygen absorbers but it's good enough to save for the amount of time that I'm going to be saving this this will probably I'll probably use this up by the end of the summer so so I'm not too worried about that this meat is obviously just really I, I'm planning to use this right away so my thought is with it is that if if say I want to have a quick lunch, I can boil up some pasta, throw this in there with a little broth or something like that. And now I've just got like a, a light soup or something. So um, could also throw into like macaroni and cheese or something like that. And it's just a little addition to add some, some extra flavor into things. So I'll experiment a little bit with that. But I like the idea of having some ready-made meals just to make it really a little bit easier on myself. Other things that I'm wanting to try freeze drying is uh, we have our goats. None of them are in milk right now, but in the past I've made cheese and would really like if I have cheese to be able to dehydrate some of it and be able to just throw it on top of things like eggs in the morning or um, this, this would be Parmesan. Parmesan would be really good just to have over the top of things. So the, I've done uh, goat cheeses that are, aren't Parmesan, but taste enough like Parmesan that I like their texture. They're a little more dry of a cheese. So, um, I think I would do that. And then if, if it freeze dries really well, I mean, people will quite often get those little craft Parmesan things to shake on their pasta and this would be my home grown homemade alternative to that if I can get that to work so we'll keep you posted on that I'm also wanting to just try different vegetables so like I have some carrots here I'm thinking I'll chop them up into chunks and maybe probably parboil them and then just freeze dry them and then I could throw those in a soup or something like that because I really don't like frozen carrots so I'm hoping that this would be a good way to store them because I don't like it when they get all limp and mushy. Brian really likes banana bread so I'm hoping to freeze dry bananas when they go on sale that way I can have a whole bunch of banana stuff. I'm kind of curious how it's going to work so I'm going to probably just chop these up into chunks and see how they look. Um, and from there I might decide to um, put them in my blender and make them into a powder that then I could just add some water and voila add that to the banana bread mixture with some water and banana bread so I'm pretty excited about this idea actually and then I got these these were on sale these seedless lemons and I just really like the idea of having these right by our 
water on the fridge so that you can take a little little tiny slice throw it in your water and it tastes a little better a little healthy punch to the water so that's my idea there so that's that's what we're doing just kind of testing the freeze dryer out so that it, hopefully at some point I'll have a little bit more time and can work more with our own produce and and things like the bananas that we would still get from the store but would be able to maybe look for sales and get things on sale and then have just an extra way of storing things in our pantry so that we one don't have to go shopping very often and two have healthier food that is a little bit more readily accessible and easy to prepare that's the idea. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the, the bottom of this video. All right. Thank you. Bye. We bought a trailer. It's a little older. Definitely. It's got its fair share of rust spots. There's a little bit of work that we'll have to do with the floorboards, but I think it's in pretty good shape for how old it is. And it's about the right size for what we were looking for. Yeah, I think we'll be happy with it. What do you think about the new trailer, Wendy? I think it needs a little work, but we'll fix it up and it will be good. Yeah. And it will take our animals around town, which is what we need. Okay. I should have listened to Wendy. Pulling this trailer was very easy with our truck. I did have to be aware of how long we were when changing lanes, but overall, I'd say it was more of a learning curve just learning how to drive this big truck in the first place. I was too confident when I pulled into our driveway. I got myself into a tight spot and just made it worse trying to back my way out of it. So this is where I'm stuck at the moment. Real close to that raised flower bed. I've got a YouTube channel, so I'm gonna do a little thing about how we're struggling with it a little bit as we try something new. Do, do you mind being on camera? I don't mind. Thank you so much. So this is Z with Z's towing, and he's gonna give us a hand. Yeah, we'll try to pull it to the side a little bit and get it out of there, so let's see what we can do here. I appreciate the help. All right, so to avoid the tree and get a better angle on this, he's got a special pulley. So it goes from the tires right up to this pulley system and then up to where the winch is. that go and I am not worried about grass growing back that'll be just fine I'm gonna go a little more just to be on the safe side but you should be good once you pull out the tires will go right next to the wood but I want to be on the safe side we'll do a little more okay Okay. So I was really having a problem getting that truck and trailer around here without hitting any of our big trees, the house, and also being able to just miss this wall here and stump. But with Z's help guiding me, I was able to get it pulled right on through here and set up in the driveway over here. Originally, we were gonna park the trailer right back here. But I think we'll just leave it where it is, more or less on a straighter part of the driveway, rather than trying to curve all the way back here and have a little tight spot trying to 
always move around it with the wheelbarrows and things for feeding our goats. I think this will be better. There's enough room in our driveway to just use that one half and leave the trailer there blocking that other half for the time being. Not ideal, but it's, it's an okay workaround for us. Let's take a quick tour of the trailer. Converting this from good for horses to good for goats will be its own video. But basically, these dividers will come out. These floor mats I think will be reusable. I'm going to be building two goat stalls back here so we can keep our does and bucks separated. One really cool thing about this particular trailer for our needs is these windows. They open and latch down below. for more air circulation. But by having those goat stalls in there, I'll be able to mount feeders and water buckets. So we'll be able to feed and water the goats right from the outside. Over on this side is a storage area. This saddle rack will come out. If we have longer trips, it'd be nice to have a spot where we can strap in a barrel for their grain and have a place to put larger containers of water for them. And finally, up here, there's a place to tie down bags of hay for the goats. Thanks for watching. Please remember to share this video with your friends. Click that like button and subscribe.